problem, what we've got is a car that's driving around a banked quarter. This could be on a racetrack or, or the on-ramp to a highway or something like that, whatever you want. And it's coming towards us at some velocity V. Right. So it's always traveling at the same velocity V. And in this case, the way this has been drawn, that's going to be out of the page. Now, this hill is angled as some angle theta. What we're going to go through and do in this problem is say that we don't want there to be any friction between the tires and the road. We want to find the perfect velocity for this car to travel around this quarter. Okay, so if we're given the value of theta, that is the bank angle of the corner, we want to be able to turn around and solve for the velocity, that is how fast the car should travel around the corner so that there doesn't need to be any friction in this situation. The problem and the mistake that people make in this, this problem is they mess up the free body diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through and look at a, a free body diagram for how people want to set this up and typically how it's, it's incorrectly set up. And people go through first and they correctly say there's gravity acting on this car. That is a non-negotiable. That one you can pretty much always be correct on. Right, and we'll go through and say the weight of the car, the force by gravity, is straight downward and it is mg. But this is where people mess up. They go through and they say that this block is just like a, a block sitting on a hill. They say Fn is upward this way, and it is, okay? But what they do is they say the Fn is mg cosine theta, just like a block on a hill. But I want you to remember where this comes from. We derived this, and we found that Fn is mg cosine theta for a block sitting on a hill in the situation where we're gonna allow a block to accelerate within the plane of the hill. Effectively, this is simply the component of mg that is perpendicular to the hill. Then we have the component parallel to the hill, which we call fd. In this problem, fn is not mg cosine theta, and I'll explain why. In this problem, when the car is going around a banked corner, it's actually accelerating towards a point not at the bottom of the hill, but a point over here. It is accelerating centripetally toward the center of the circle. So our centripetal acceleration is horizontal, which means the net force needs to be horizontal or pointed inward. That's the whole idea behind centripetal acceleration. It means center pointed acceleration. So this car is accelerating toward the center of the circle, not down the hill. That means the net force of the car needs to be towards the center of the circle. That is in the x-axis, not down the hill. So when we look at the normal force here, the normal force actually needs to be larger than in this case of a block on a hill. And the oddity of this is when you look at this, the normal force has a horizontal component and it has a vertical component. And we don't want to allow the car to accelerate vertically, only horizontally. So we're going to look at Fn in the x direction and Fn in the y direction in order to solve this problem. The first thing that we need to recognize is that the sum of all forces in the y-axis is zero. Now the forces acting vertically on this car are Fn in the y-axis and mg. Those need to add up to zero. So quick enough we can see that Fny is equal to mg. And if we spend a little time with this, we can recognize that this angle here is equal to that angle there. And so if I don't want to talk about fn y, but rather fn and some function of the angle, I can say f n cosine theta equals mg. If you look at this, this looks very similar to what we have over here. But let's go one more line and we'll find Fn is mg over cosine theta. 
FN in the situation of this car going around a banked corner is not the same as for a block on a hill. Okay, you'll see we've got mg over cosine theta for the car going around the corner, accelerating horizontally. We've got mg cosine theta if we're allowing this to slide down the hill. They're similar, but, but very different, okay? One is just flat out wrong, okay? This is our value for Fn. Now, why do we need to know Fn? That's pretty straightforward. Let's look at all the forces in the x-axis acting on this car. We know those are gonna cause this car, which has some mass m, to accelerate in the x-axis, or centripetally as we'll, we're putting it here. So, let's expand out what's happening horizontally. In the x-axis, we have Fn, or at least its horizontal component, that's gonna cause the mass to go through centripetal acceleration. Remember, centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. Slowly, what we're doing is we're pulling the values that are given to us in the problem, theta and V, and, and we're plugging them into the physics equations that we know that we're able to correctly apply. Going one step farther and expanding Fn in the x direction, we'll see we have Fn sine theta equals mv squared over r. Now I know this idea that the x component or the horizontal component is a sine, that seems a little bit strange, but take a look at this triangle and you realize the opposite side is the horizontal component. The problem here being you get so used to looking at right triangles in math class, like this, where the angle is always nice and pretty sitting right there, and you've got your right angle there, people start to think cosine is always the horizontal and sine is always the vertical component. That's not the case here because our angle is up in this corner. What you'll notice now is we solved for Fn over here, and now I have an equation relating theta and V. This is going to give me You'll notice, we weren't given the mass of the car, but that mass cancels out here, okay? We're trying to solve for V as a function of theta. So if I pull this over here, I'm going to have GR, I can combine sine and cosine, tangent theta, equals V squared, or rearranging this for V, I'm going to have V is equal to the square root of GR tangent theta. This is the solution to what I call the car around a banked corner problem. There's a lot of little pitfalls in this, largely in setting up the free body diagram correctly and understanding how the forces relate. The math isn't hard. It's not. All right. But you have to be careful in how you set up the relationship between the forces, largely this relationship right here between Fn and Mg. It spets out something that's a little bit familiar but not quite what you might have memorized for a block on a hill, because this isn't a block on a hill. And that's all for now.